Chairman Fredrickson. Here. Commissioner Noble. Here. Commissioner Goss. Here. Commissioner Shores. Commissioner Marino. I'm here. Uh, Commissioner Swap is excused, and I am still waiting for Commissioner Waters to join. And then we also have Council Liaison Staley. Yes, hello, everybody. How you doing? Good, thank you. We have a quorum, sir. All right, thank you. Um, Elizabeth, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you turn on your microphones, everybody. All right. Item number one, approval of minutes. Item A, regular meeting minutes of September 14th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion. I'll second. I have a second. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I hear none. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number two, consideration of public comments. Those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comments will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for consideration and decision at a later time pursuant to ARS 38-431. A, a hybrid meeting in person attendance, call in participation and written comments. One, in person, those wishing to address the commission in person do not need to pre-register, pre but space is limited and will be allotted on a first come, first served basis. Attendance priorities will be given to presenters first and then non-presenters. Two, call ins. Those wishing to address the commission by telephone will need to pre-register by 9 a.m on October 12th, 2021 by emailing planning and zoning at cityofkingman.gov and provide their name, address, telephone number. They will be using email and, and agenda item they would like to comment on. Once registered, a link with additional instructions will be provided. Only those who have pre-registered will be admitted to the meeting. Item three, written, written comments. All written comments must be submitted prior to 9 a.m. on October 12th, 2021 by emailing planning at city of kingman.gov or dropping off the comments at the Community Development Department and the Main City of Complex at 310 North 4th Street. Members of the public can watch or listen to the meeting live via Channel 4 or on YouTube at youtube.com slash City of Kingman. Item 3, Old Business. A discussion of improvement requirements for accessory garages and carports in single-family residential areas. The parking area design standards of the King and Zone Zoning Code require all driveways to be improved with paving, including driveways to accessory garages and carports in single family residential areas. Planning and Zoning Commission will review driveway requirements and, or, and other jurisdictions to discuss equivalent servicing options for driveways to, uh, to accessory res residential structures. And that isn't a mouthful. <laughs> Richard. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, commission. Um, and before I begin this evening, uh, just wanted to kind of clarify, uh, is there have been some rumors in the public regarding exactly what this item is about? Um, this is not a new ordinance that we're considering. It's, it, it, it exists within our current uh, zoning code. Um, also, it is not a retroactive ordinance where we would be uh, requiring um, all driveways say in residential areas to be paved. This is strictly in regards to uh, new garages and carports um, that provide access to vehicles um, uh, where a driveway would be required and that driveway would have to be improved in accordance with the standards in the code. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll get into the actual um, discussion. Um, again, this comes from our new zoning code the parking area and design requir requirements are applied to all new buildings or structures. And in the uh, case of a um, garage or carport, it provides a parking area. Uh, the parking areas themselves, uh, aisles and driveways are required to be improved with a durable dustless surface. 
of asphalt, concrete, or essentially a, a recycled asphalt surface, or the equivalent of the above, which may be approved by the director, which is the community development manager. <clears throat> and all those, and all driveways are required to be um, extended from the required parking spaces to the approved portion of the, of, of the adjoining street, uh, except where a single family dwelling is constructed on a city maintained dirt street. With no improvements, a driveway at, at a minimum must be maintained and improved um, with aggregate base course or the equivalent. Um, and that's uh, until that street is improved uh, with, with paving. In that point, the, um, the uh, driveway would have to be improved with um, either asphalt or a concrete surface. Uh, further, we define within the zoning code um, what a carport is, what a garage way, what a garage is, what a driveway is. Um, just to clarify what we're talking about, these are the situations in which a driveway <coughs> would be required, uh, either accessing a, a carport or a garage. So the minimum number of parking spaces that a single family home <coughs> is required to provide is two. And that's true for both the former and current zoning codes. And typically, this is a concrete driveway with a garage or carport. The previous zoning ordinance required the improvement of driveways to be associated with any required parking spaces. Um, driveways to accessory garages or carports that provide additional parking over and above the minimum were not required to be improved as long as the minimum requirement was already met. Uh, the new code requires the paving of all driveways that provide access to any parking areas in all zones and for all uses, and that includes residential accessory garages and carports. Uh, and the exception again to the rule is an ABC surfacing may be uh, allowed, which is basically a gravel driveway. Uh, in the case of a, a residence or a, a garage that's being <clears throat> constructed on a lot that has frontage on an on unimproved dirt street that the city is maintaining and that improvement of the driveway is deferred until the street is improved. So at our September 14th meeting, there was discussion of the driveway standards um, in response to a number of complaints and concerns that were raised by uh, those wishing to build accessory garages and carports. Uh, this is especially true on larger single family lots and the concerns were due primarily to the incre increased construction costs associated with the pavement of the driveway. In many cases, people didn't plan for that additional cost. Uh, we did hear from, uh, from several people at the meeting, and those comments are in, in the minutes. We also received um, a number of written comments that were emailed to our office since the last meeting, and those are attached in the staff report. Um, at the last meeting, the, st the commission directed staff to research best practices in other jurisdictions and report back the findings. And the goal was to identify lower cost solutions that would still meet the requirement of a durable dustless surface for the uh, driveways. Uh, so um, Gary assisted me in doing some of this research. Um, we looked at um, five other jurisdictions beyond the city of Kingman, including Mojave County, Lake Havasu, Bullhead, Prescott, and Henderson, Nevada. Uh, what we found is, uh, with the exception of Mojave County, all single family residents had to provide uh, a paved or hard surface type driveway. Um, in the city of Lake Havasu, there was not a uh, requirement for driveways to accessory buildings, um, but in Bullhead, Prescott, and Henderson, there was. Uh, besides the city of Kingman, um, Prescott allows alternative surfacing, um, but Bullhead and Henderson uh, do not. We also looked at uh, the Rancho Santa Fe area in Kingman, which is an area that has half acre lots and a fair, fair number of, of detached accessory garages and carports. Um, of the 714 lots within that subdivision, 107 lots had a detached accessory garage or carport. And then we determined that by looking at um, aerial photographs of the area. Um, of those 107 lots, 47% had fully paved driveways. Um, 19 lots had partially paved driveways where uh, often what was happening is that the driveway was paved from the street to uh, a fence or, or a gate and it was unpaved beyond that point. 
Uh, and then there were 38 lots or about 36% had completely gravel or dirt driveways between the street and the detached accessory garage or, or carport. So in essence, about 65% of the lots had at least partially either paved, completely paved or partially paved driveways um, on their lots to those accessory structures. And all of them had driveways, paved driveways to their main garages. So this is just a, an aerial view, kind of talking about, kind of showing what we're talking about. Uh, the minimum driveway width requirement is 12 feet. Um, and this, this is the case where uh, garages have been, been constructed in the far back of a property. So you can see there is a, a fair distance from, from the street to the, to the garage. 145 feet in that in that uh, scenario there in the center. Also on the right is a, a driveway from a gate to the street uh, for an RV. Now we would not actually require that driveway to be paved in the scenario because there is not a garage in the rear of the property. It's, it is providing uh, a driveway to an RV, but the RV is out in the open. It's not in a, in a carport or garage. So they've chosen to put this driveway in the place, but we would not be requiring it. Um, all the photographs and, and aerials that you'll see this evening are also of structures that uh, would have put those improvements in prior to the new code going to effect. Um, so again, this on the, on the ground, this is what it kind of looks like. Um, 12 foot wide <clears throat> driveway to a, a, uh, a garage in the back. And you can see there's a trailer parked there on the driveway. Another, another example here. Uh, another example is, uh, and this is something we certainly could, uh, could allow, is where you, you don't necessarily have to have a full, full on additional driveway to the street. You can come off the existing uh, driveway uh, as this um, house has chosen to do and provide a paved surface to the garage in the back, provided that the driveway the, the nearest point would be 12 feet wide. So that's a uh, that's certainly allowable, <clears throat> and that would save uh, some cost of extending that all the way to the street. Uh, here is an example of someone that didn't chose to le leave it as gravel. You can kind of see the, uh, the the difference in how that looks. And then there is an example of again, really no defined driveway, just a gate, <clears throat> and and parked parked on dirt or gravel. And another example of that. Um, the, this is an example of a ribbon driveway uh, where someone has put in uh, three foot wide concrete runners <clears throat> um, for, for the vehicles. Um, they have extended to the, their gate. I'm not sure in this case if there's a garage back there or not, but um, this is kind of visually what I'm gonna show you on the next slide, which is um, an alternative uh, that we've come up with since our last meeting. Um, we've uh, we consulted with the engineering department and the site plan, plan was provided by a gentleman who actually spoke to you at, at your last meeting who was concerned <clears throat> with um, requiring us requiring a fairly lengthy driveway to a new garage that he was building in the back of his property. Um, so as I said, we did come up with a um, an equivalent surfacing that provides durable dustless surface um, that, and that can be approved under the zoning code. So again, it has three foot wide concrete runners with um, DG, which is de decomposed granite or other similar surfacing in the center that would provide proper uh, drainage and dust control. Also the driveway width was reduced from 12 to 10 feet to accommodate the, the width of the of the vehicle, which in this case was uh, going to be a, uh, an RV. <clears throat> the other factor we considered was that uh, this was going to be sort of a lower frequency of use, garage or carport, because uh, this is really for an RV, wouldn't be used on a daily basis, so that um, would also reduce the possibility of dust, drainage, or erosion issues. Um, so to sort of sum, summarize, summarize this, um, uh, discussion with, with, with the commission. 
um, pavement requirements for driveways for accessory garages was required in four of the six jurisdictions that we researched with two including the city of Kingman allowing alternative surfacing like I've just showed, showed you. Um, nearly 65% of the accessory garages and carports in Rancho Santa Fe uh, have improved or partially improved driveways and that would have been uh, true prior to the new code going into effect. So it's already uh, fairly well accepted practice uh, in that, at least in that area. Uh, in addition, staff may approve an alternative driveway surfacing provided that it's an equivalent durable dustless surface. Um, staff would support a policy of allowing alternative surfacing requirements such as a ribbon driveway concept for residential detached garages and carports based on lower frequency use, um, based on the chances of, of lower chance of, of this becoming a, a source of dust, strange or, or erosion. So the commission is asked to review and discuss the requirements for the driveway improvements, specifically associated with single family residential accessory garages and carports, um, and that provide par parking in excess of the required number of spaces. The commission um, is asked to provide the direction to staff. You could also consider this evening a motion to initiate a text amendment um, to the uh, King Code if you wish to uh, make some changes to the code uh, that would have to be um, done through the text minute process. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions? I, I have a question. Um, sure. Would it require a text amendment in order to allow for alternative surfaces like the ribbon driveway, or is that already allowable? It, it's already allowable under the current code that we can consider alternative um, scenarios like this one. So what what we've, what we've done is we, when we get something like this that comes in, we will share it with our engineering department and, and they are the experts on this, you know, on, on this uh, subject as far as the surface durability and, and, and so on. Uh, we had someone pr propose another scenario which was essentially more of, a, more of a gravel type surfacing and we determined that, that after about a year it probably would deteriorate so it obviously is not equivalent surfacing because it has to be durable and dustless and lasts as long as a typical concrete or asphalt surface. So um, so that would be a scenario where we're, that we wouldn't approve. But this one, uh, we felt that it, it met uh, it met really the spirit and the, and the purpose of the, of the, the code <clears throat> and, and therefore it can be approved under the current code, code without amending the text. Okay, thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, sure. I uh, had a, a question as well, um, Commissioner Marino. Um, I uh, was curious if with the driveways, when they go to a gate, I know it seemed pretty clear that if there was a garage somewhere back or a house somewhere back, um, that, that it needs to continue all the way up to the building structure, as I understand it. Um, how do exceptions to that work in any, any way? Because I, for instance, I have a neighbor who uh, has his house set quite a bit back off of the property line and the pavement goes to his gate. And then after that, it's a dirt, just a dirt driveway up to the house, yet it's in the city limits. And I'm just curious how a house gets final uh, occupancy and all that, if something like that's done and what the details are and how that works with houses and garages. Sure, so um, in, in your neighbor's scenario, it may be that that came in prior to the new code going into effect. Um, today, if someone were to uh, build a garage in the back of their property, um, this standard is still to have the, the, the driveway be extended all the way to the garage, uh, very similar to what you see here <clears throat> on, the, uh, on the diagram. Uh, okay. or, uh, uh, so that would be uh, still a requirement, but we can consider the alternative surfacing, which this is one scenario. There may be others out there that we haven't thought of yet um, that we could consider, um, but this is just one, one example. Okay, so even even if it's, you know, it could be a quarter mile set back if you're on some massive property, you do need to have a dustless solid surface of some sort, even over a long distance like that. That, that would be correct. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, we we could um, consider that if it if it turns out it's equivalent to a um, a concrete or, or asphalt surface, um, that would be something we you know, someone could propose. We'll, we would take it engineering and and uh, we could uh, review it and, and determine whether it, it's um, equivalent. 
Uh, one thing about pavers is that you have, some, have something that's quite heavy that goes on it. It might sink over time versus a, a concrete or asphalt surface that may, may be, you know, uh, more durable. But it's not something we would certainly look at. Hey, Rich, on, oh, on your uh, research slide you, for the city of Kingman, you had alternates. Uh, you allow alternates in the city of Kingman. What are, what are the alternates? Uh, well, what, what I just explained would be papers? an alternative surfacing would be like the concrete runner. That would be something that we could consider. Maybe pavers as well. Uh, again, we'd have to have it, uh, uh, cons consult with our engineering department to determine whether the proposal would met okay. that alternative surfing, surfacing that was uh, durable and dustless. So, Richard, just for clarification, um, probably from what the last 50 years, we've had similar language, and it wasn't yes. up until 2019 when we decided to do an overhaul after 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, we just pretty much put in a little bit more different language under this. So it's, in, in, in intent purposes, it's always been there, just a little bit different definition now. Yeah, really the only change is that um, this, the requirements for the driveway paving are applicable to all parking uh, areas uh, in, all, in all scenarios. Previously, it was only uh, applied to um, uh, the required parking. Any other, any other questions? All right, I see none. Thank you, Richard. Okay, thanks. I'll open it up to the public if anybody has any comments. Or questions, please step forward. Please step forward and state your name. My name is Larry Kersich. I've been a Kingman resident for about eight years now. Uh, I think I've talked to you about the doing the container thing that we oh. got stopped. So anyway, um, I'm, there's a lot of confusion about this thing. And I apologize, I skipped over the Zoning Commission and I went to, the, to my city council and the mayor with some emails about this. And there's a lot of people saying, I've got a dirt driveway, do I need to pave it? And it's my understanding that that's only for new construction or if somebody wants to build a new carport or uh, auxiliary building, is that correct? Richard, that's correct. That is correct. So yes. anything up to now is grandfathered in, and as long as there isn't a new building. Uh, just, just for an example, okay, a, a personal thing. About five years ago, I built a, a shop on my property. I put in a garage door, but I don't park anything there. That cost me about $5,000 to build. Uh, my wife and I live off Social Security and a small annuity, so we don't have a lot of money, so I did everything myself. Um, when we have improved our property, we put in crushed gravel on our driveway and there's absolutely no dust there. Um, sorry, I'm trying to catch up here. <laughs> um, so anyway, it was 5,000 bucks. I paid the city $500 in building permits, which I don't think I got a lot of uh, value out of. Um, inspectors there about five minutes two times and then he has gone and signed off, which is fine. Under this new ordinance, if I wanted to build that shop now on my property and I would have to pave or concrete the, the driveway, we, we would live on an acre and a half, so there's quite a ways. I checked paving would cost about $20,000. That would that would totally blow this project out of the water for me to, uh, to do it. Um, I spent about 20 years in real estate lending and appraising. Uh, the value of paving my driveway, I figured it would be about $1,500. It cost me $20,000. I might get $1,500 in value. The thing is that when people buy a house, they expect there to be a roof on it. They don't care if it's shingle or metal or, or tile. Um, they, and when people buy a house, they expect to have a driveway. They don't care whether it's asphalt, concrete, um, or gravel, as long as they can drive in. So that's why there's such a small amount of value for the uh, <clears throat> the cost of putting in a, a you know a, an asphalt driveway. 
Also, asphalt breaks down. In five years, that asphalt is going to crack. There's really no way of fixing it. You can put the, 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 the tart, well, worms or whatever you're calling it. You can leave it cracked, or you can take it all out and redo it for another twenty or $30,000. So this is a very monumental expense that you're putting on, on us. Um, <clears throat> so in essence, what you're doing, although the tax isn't going to the city, you're putting an, an enormous tax burden on a, on a person to try to, just to improve their property. Um, Sir, I, um, I, I think you're confused because we're not imposing anything new. This is, like, as I stated earlier, this has been in, imposed for 50 plus years. And then because of so many tax amendments and so forth that we've had to do and, and prior commission members, um, we, the, the planning and zoning and city came together and decided we need to update our codes because they have not been touched for over 50 years. So this isn't anything new. We're not imposing anything new on anybody here. It, it's if you want to build a structure, this is what's been in the guidelines for 50 years. It, just the language has been changed a little bit. Okay. So I just want to make sure so you understand. Well, this whole thing has been very confusing and very upsetting to especially all my neighbors who I've talked to. So. And no, we're, we're not imposing anything new to anybody. So. It, it's, it, it, it's been there, just the language has been redefined under the new code that we spent. We spent two years going through the codes, numerous open meetings for the general public to come okay. and participate during okay. this process. So well, I apologize for coming in late. This kind of caught me a little bit off. No, you're, you're, more than, yeah. we're more, you're more than welcome, and we're glad you. And I, I think there's been some bad information coming out from our local newspaper and, of course, from the, the, the so if this has been here, I guess I really don't have much to say more about it. So. No, hopefully this clears it up for everybody that we're not going after anybody. This has been there. It's just a revision that that's happened now in our in our code zoning code update. So this is from our from this point on forward then. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's not. We're not going around knocking on anybody's door and saying you have to comply. It's only on new construction as was dis, um, displayed in the, in the diagram, if you want to do a carport or RV garage or a workshop, whatever. Okay. But for a, a small project like a, a carport, let's say, that costs 2000 bucks, in my, in my instance, it would, I'd have to pave everything up to that carport, correct? From the street? Pave or, or <coughs> concrete? The, right. There'd be a driveway requirement from the improved portion of the street to the to wherever the carport or garage was on your property. Would it, hit, would it hit the existing driveway too? Would that all have to be done or just, just the, the affected portion? If you have the existing unpaved driveway, then it, it would be just whatever is n new that's going to be constructed would, would have to be paved. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm, I'm confused and I'm straightened out, so thank you well, for I hope that. we got a little more on track, sir. All right. Thank you. Any other comment from the general public? Please come forward and state your name. I'm Catherine Furtado, and I have a question. I have a permit now to build a garage. It hasn't been constructed yet, so will I have to have the rest of my driveway paved, or will I be grandfathered in? We don't know your circumstances, so that would, that would have to be addressed when you apply for your permit. No, I have a permit. That would be? That's current. My building won't be built until next week. My permit is current and valid. So will I, have to will I have to pave my driveway after my building is up next week, or am I grandfathered in? So if, if you're building an accessory garage yes. on your property, yes. and the, the, the approach of the driveway between the street and the garage does have to be paved with concrete asphalt or on the alternative surfacing if we if we approve that um, it would be on it would have been improved on the plans if you've already got approved plans or yes okay and it was not there was nothing about extending the driveway to the street yeah on those plans okay okay well well after the meeting we can confer and, and figure out what, what's going on with that 
situation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any comments like this? All right, I see none. I'll close it off. Oh. Sir, please state your name when you come up. Speak into the microphone. Hi, Mike Avitabile, resident and also a builder here in Kingman. Um, we have several people that build uh, garages in the back of our buildings. We have sometimes half-acre lots that we deal with here in the city. Um, and I'm behind the times on this particular implementation of this planning and zoning ordinance, unfortunately. And, of course, this is going to affect the way people build their homes. As indicated from this gentleman here, you're adding 30 sometimes $40,000 to the price of the garage. Excuse me, we're not adding anything, sir. You're, you're requiring us to yes. make a driveway that adds to the cost. Just so you know, it's always been there. It's mm -hmm. nothing new. Well, so we didn't implement it. It's been there for the last 40 years, but nobody's, nobody's uh, on all these buildings that we've built, nobody's implemented this, this planning and zoning ordinance and made us meet this requirement. Sir, I, I, I'm not. So then I guess the only way that we can attack this is by trying to change the ordinance, correct? Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? I see none. Thank you, it's closed. Okay, I'll open it up to commission members. I know one. I know one thing on on there, um, and, and probably to your your question, and I discussed earlier, which Richard and Gary and, and the engineering department could discuss too. Um, they also make um, cement block. Um, I don't know if you want to call them pavers. They're usually twelve by twelve or sixteen by sixteen, and and you can grow grass through it, or it's not seen. You could do you know gravel. So. I think that's another alternative to, to to the situation. That's to the purpose, right? Yes. Yes. Tell me how long it takes to actually have a lot of people to drive. And it was because of the, the large amount of snow and water, you know, um, at all times. I think it was like you drive it every time. I think we have had alternatives, but um, I, I like with, it's not posted here, but um, if you can get to the slide, Rich, where, where is the alternative where you guys could make the final say so? You had in there. Jason, any any comments in there from you? No, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. I got a question. I guess if um, what's the process if the public wants to have this uh, section of the code revisited? <clears throat> the Planning Zoning Commission would have to uh, initiate a, a textman or someone someone a member of the public could. Um, uh, apply to uh, amend the code and then you would hear have a public hearing uh, before the commission and then we go to the council okay. sure um, so, so <clears throat> this has been in our code for 50 years and it was never Well, the, as I said, the difference between the previous code and the current code is that um, the paving requirement um, for was was applied to required parking, uh, and now we apply to all scenarios where you have a parking, uh, either a garage or a carport or 
uh, or any any scenario where you you can have a vehicle driving onto a fix uh, a property um, anytime you need a driveway. Basically, it's required to be paved. So so there is a, a, a tweak, a difference in the in the two two codes. I see. So mm -hmm. it was just it was the wording that really changed. The wording was changed. Yes. So, uh, so it was in the past the previous code. It was just to the required garage. Right. And with this new code, now it's with any parking within the any parking to a, a garage or carport. We would not apply it to a, let's say, an RV pad or, or something that, or just or may, other vehicles that they just want to park on their property, <clears throat> but that does not have a garage or carport. Um, we don't require that to be paved. So, <clears throat> if, if we want to, as a commission, um, alternative services, <laughs> would we have to make? Um, Amendment for onto you, or we just can allow you as you've done here in this example. <clears throat> well, I mean, you could you could initiate an amendment to the code to make this a standard for perhaps accessory buildings in the in the residential area or something along those lines, um, or you could <clears throat> allow us to you know consider various alternatives and. Um, you know, and, and see how things go. Uh, this may not be the only alternative that's out there that, that right. we could consider, as we've mentioned this evening. So we don't want to necessarily box ourselves into to anything that says, well, this is the new standard. And also keep in mind, whatever the standard is, even though that's supposed to be the minimum, sometimes that becomes the maximum. Uh, <laughs> would, it, would it be confusing for the general public, if we went with your ladder, mentioned that upon permits, you guys then would determine um, <clears throat> some suitable? Or yeah, I mean, I think at this point we have established that this is an alternative that we will accept for other scenarios. Um, so it, it, it kind of de facto becomes a, an, a, a, a scenario that we allow, um, but there could be others out there that we haven't considered yet. So. I'm, I'm kind of open for that suggestion because I'm afraid um, after after two years and 50 something years if, if we if we start making any changes to the zoning after all this work what we're saying is that we didn't agree with any of the zoning code updates that we just done and I think we're, by doing that I think we're just shooting ourselves in the foot me personally but I'm open I'm open to you know so I, I think that you know we went through this process of uh, updating the zoning code um, and it went to city council it's all been approved I think if uh, the public wants to have this revisited I think it should be left up to the public to do that at this point I agree I, um, you know what well, you're saying is just leave it as it is yeah, yeah. I agree with that Oh I'd like to make a motion. Make a motion? Yeah, I would like to uh, make a motion to uh, bring back to the public. Is this an item that we're making a motion on? This is old business. Just, no, just to have it. It's still old business, but just to have the public you know, be more aware. We already uh, have. Uh, we already have. We keep referring to something different. Because if I was to move to make a motion for a second, I would strike out of the, um, the new code that it has to be for a second and just leave the standard requirement for the required parking. I mean, because it is going to hurt a lot of uh, people in this community financially if we start placing these kind of burdens of fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars in ticket fees for accessory. I feel if it's already the 
revisit everything. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Well, that, that's, um, that's why we have text count. It's so when situations and scenarios come up, we revisit them one by one. Um, I'm not saying wait 50 years before we do a mass reconstruction of the road, but I'm, I am only saying that maybe we revisit it. So going forward, Rich, Guess we needed a, a, a roll call vote if we want to leave it as is, or or what? Well, I, I mean, you don't have to actually vote on anything this evening. Um, you could you could give us direction if you want us to bring back further information, or <clears throat> if you do wish to, if if we have a motion to initiate a text amendment and that gets seconded, you could have a vote on that. Uh, that's really the two scenarios that that are available. I think, I think. What was the second scenario? The, the two scenarios are you could just give us direction, um, either to bring back more, more information, or you could s simply say leave it as is. That could be direction. You don't necessarily need to vote on that, uh, but you would need to vote if you wanted to initiate a text amendment. Uh, that would require a motion and a, a second, and then some direction as to what you wanted the language to state. Would it, would it I, be more clarifying if we had more? I think I think I think we already have an approved zoning code. At this point, it's up to the public to band together and uh, go through the process to have uh, you know this amendment or have an amendment regarding the uh, the driveway to to secondary structures revisited. A member of the public could could make an application to change any portion of the text of the zoning code, and then it would be, uh, and then it would go to to you first for public hearing, and then to the council. Uh, yeah, so I that's also an, an, a scenario that's allowed. It doesn't require you to make any motions to that effect. It just that's another thing that could happen. So it's just I agree. Just tabling. Um, you could. Well, tabling it usually means you, you're going to you're planning on coming back to revisit it. Um, you could, as I said, give us direction to leave it as is and see what happens, um, and then you know we could continue with the alternative surfacing that we've talked about. Um, you could give us direction, other direction, or you could initiate a text amendment if you wish to tonight to um, bring a uh, item back for discussion at the next meeting which would be a public hearing to consider changing the, the code. In my opinion, the, <clears throat> I think the best thing for us to do is to leave the text as is, and if the public has an issue that they want to change, then they need to go through the process to bring that before us. Um, because I think that, um, you know, we've done a lot of work to make the code the way it is. If people are having enough of a problem with it that they want it changed, then they need to come to us and go through the process to get the change, at which time we'd be glad to consider mm -hmm. their opinions. So I'll make a motion. Make a motion to uh, leave the text as is regarding uh, surface driveways to secondary structures. I'll second that. I have a motion, I have a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. Roll call vote, please, Tom. Chairman Fredrickson? I'm in favor. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Approved. Commissioner Shores? All approved. Commissioner Marino? Yes. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Don. All right, new item number four, new business. Item A, abandonment case AB21-0006. A request from Lori A. Boss. Barslow, 
applicant for the abandonment, abandonment of portion of the right of way for East Pine Street. The area of right of way subject to the abandonment request is approximately 50 <coughs> feet in length and 28 feet in width or 1,400 square feet. The right of way is adjacent to the rear property line of 107 East Spring Street, located east of 1st Street, APN 303-06-184. Richard. Uh, good evening, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mem members of the uh, commission. Uh, this is an abandonment case, AB 21-006. <clears throat> it's for the abandonment of a portion of a, a right-of-way for East Pine Street. Uh, the request is from Lori uh, Voss Barthlow, uh, and the who is the budding property owner uh, for the abandonment of the uh, the portion of Pine Street. Uh, the area is um, about 50 feet in length by 28 feet in width, or 1,400 square feet. It's located at the rear of the property line of 170 Spring Street. Uh, there is a detached residential garage and carport that's located partially within the right of way. Uh, and the area uh, surrounding the site is zoned T4N, which is the uh, one of the transit zones, uh, transit zone four neighborhood. The uh, projected land use of this area is intermediate density residential nine to 16 un units per acre. Uh, this map shows the location of the right of way um, along the south side of Pine Street. Uh, the uh, a, uh, a areas of Pine Street were previously um, sold, which I'll get into this discussion uh, in a moment, um, to the adjoining property owners in 1962. However, um, we did not find a deed for this particular property, uh, so the right way still exists adjacent to this site. Again, this aerial shows the, the area to be, to be vacated, and you can see that the uh, existing garage and, and carport uh, is clearly within the uh, part of the right of way that's not been vacated. <clears throat> the residence on the adjoining property dates to 1919, according to the Mojave County uh, Recorder's Office. Uh, the garage and carport was, that's located partly in the right of way was constructed sometime uh, prior to 1960, according to the, to the applicant. Uh, this area was part of the original Corporation of Kingman in 1952. Uh, ten years later, 1962, the City Council passed Resolution Number uh, 182, in which the City agreed to sell uh, several 28-foot wide strips of the Pine Street right-of-way that was not needed uh, to the adjoining property owners between 1st and 3rd Streets. And this was conditioned on the owners entering into the sale with the city for the right of way and paying for the ind individual surveys <clears throat> and legal fees. Um, that, but as I mentioned, there was no re record of deconveying this part of the right of way to the owner at the time uh, of uh, 1070 Spring Street. The original zoning of the property was residential in 1955. Uh, later, when the when the Original zoning code was adopted in 1971. This was changed to R2. And then most recently, it uh, became the T4N zone that uh, I mentioned under the new code and the new uh, zoning map. <clears throat> the um, uh, area where the street falls from east down to the west with about a three foot elevation change. Uh, it's located outside the 500 year flood zone. Uh, there are no known utilities within this portion of the right-of-way that's subject to the abandonment. Uh, Pine Street is a 72-foot wide right-of-way from 1st to 3rd Street, except where it's 100 feet wide at the subject location. Um, Pine Street is a paved street with curb garden, but no sidewalk at this location. And the street improvements are actually located outside the, the right-of-way area being considered for abandonment. <clears throat> and this, uh, these photos kind of show the location, proximate area for abandonment is behind that red line where the, where the garage is. Uh, the area from the, uh, basically where, the, where there's a fence to the east there, where the fence line is, is pretty much, uh, and street side is, is, is still right away, everything <clears throat> essentially to the south of that fence line is, uh, is private property, except again, adjacent to this uh, property, which is still right of way. We posted the site on September 23rd. <clears throat> there was an ad in the Kingman Minor on the 26th. 
Uh, we notified all the property owners within 300 feet. We did re receive one letter of support from a neighboring property owner, <clears throat> and there were no other comments received. Also, there were no comments or objections from any city departments or agencies, and there were no other comments received. So again, the uh, applicant proposed to add a, a shade structure to the existing garage and, and carport at 170 Spring Street, and that, that time is when we discovered of the issue with the right-of-way. Um, so therefore, the abandonment has been requested. Uh, as I mentioned, 1962, the city did agree to um, sell um, these strips of Pine Street right-of-way for $10 <coughs> per 50 front feet. <laughs> That comes out to about $90.59 in 2021 dollars, um, uh, plus the cost of the individual surveys and legal fees. Again, there's no record of a deed uh, of sale for this particular portion of the, of the right of way. Uh, so, there are street policy governs uh, procedures for the vacation of the right of way. Um, it also states that we cannot abandon right of way where there's any existing utilities. Uh, however, we determine there are no, no utilities in, in the part of the right of way that's being considered for abandonment. Um, the uh, street policy, as well as the state statute, uh, requires the council to accept amount from the abutting property owner uh, when any, when any uh, uh, right of way is, be, is being considered to be abandoned. Um, that amount has to be de deemed to be commensurate with its value. Um, what that is is not defined. Um, we have accepted a number of different um, amounts over time. Uh, I show uh, the most recent amounts that were accepted um, uh, in, in, on the slide here. The applicant has offered $2,500, which works out to about $1.78 a square foot for the right-of-way. Um, some recent abandonments were the um, uh, two walkway parcels in Rancho Santa Fe which were both $1.14 a square foot. Uh, we also did a sale of a, of a unneeded right-of-way in the uh, Eagle View subdivision that's a, done under a different uh, statute, uh, and that sale was uh, 23 cents a square foot. Um, also, the ARS 28-7205 states that when a right-of-way is vacated, the title uh, vests to the owners of the land abutting the right-of-way which each owner taking to the center of the roadway. However, in this case, the only abutting owner is, is the applicant, so they would receive the entire uh, portion of the right of way if, if it's ab abandoned. Um, so staff is recommending approval uh, of this request um, to vacate a 28 by 50 foot portion of the right of way for East, Spring, East Pine Street, adjacent to 107 Spring Street, uh, with one of the following conditions. And one would be to recommend an acceptance of the offer of $2,500 as being commensurate with the value of the right-of-way, or um, we could recommend a different amount um, at being commensurate with the value of the right-of-way. Um, so with that, I'll be available to answer any questions, and the applicant is also here this evening if you have any questions of her. Any questions, Richard? Uh, Jason? I am good, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Richard, thank you. Thank you. I'll open this up to the general public. Do we have any questions or comments on this? I brought some copies. Uh, I didn't know if you want me to say anything. It's up to you, ma'am. If you do, step forward. If not, should I get my checkbook out? No, I don't. That, that's that's at another place in time. All right, I'll close it off to the public. All right, open it up to the commission. I'm fine with making a motion. If so am I. Okay. Well, then I'll just make a motion that we accept uh, with the condition stated in number one um, to accept the uh, $2,500 and approve the right away abandonment. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. Roll call vote, please. Chairman Fredrickson? Approved. Commissioner Noble? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Approved. Commissioner Shores? Approved. Commissioner Marino? Approved. Goss. 
All right, thank you, Don. Thank you, everybody. Item number five, announcements by commission members. Limited to announcements, availability, or attendance at conferences and seminars. Requests for agenda items for future meetings and requests for re reports from staff. No discussion on any of these items. Any questions or comments? None for me. Jason? I'm great, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. All right, I need a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. I have a motion for, and I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.